book your driving lesson now at dla-driving.co.uk. Hello and welcome to Owen the Town. I'm Lou Gregory and here's what's coming up today. Luton head over to Hull and come back with three points and it pushes them up to third in the table. Can we start dreaming of the Premier League? Because I think after Saturday we were absolutely buzzing. Today we'll discuss that win in a little bit more detail and also discuss the possibilities of Luton Town playing Premier League football next season. It sounds like a dream. At the moment we're all dreaming. And I think it's okay to dream. Uh, we have a look at Jordan Clark. This guy has been amazing since his return from injury. How have you rated his performances? Is he a must start going forward? That's what we asked you today. And we've also got a few Instagram questions to get through and to help me get through them all, as always, is Dave and Bataro sat opposite me a bit earlier on, on the podcast today, guys. It's nice. Nice to get it done a bit earlier. But uh, how are you both? Very well. Very well. Living the Not dream, aren't we? Yeah, of course. Nice little international break we're going to now with uh, points on the board. So let's go again. I'm yeah. kind of glad we're going in, into an international break because I've been enjoying watching Luton so much recently that, you know, two weeks without it now, it's mm-hmm. it's going to drag a little bit. Might drag, but uh, what benefit is that going to give our, our players to recover? Plus the ones that are injured as well. Yeah, so exactly that. So exactly that. It's a good thing. So you never know, get some injuries back or back from injury, sorry, and uh, make that push. Mm. It's I, know always saying, I know what you're saying about obviously no football is... It's yeah. not nice, is it? And it's always the case with an international break. You don't know which way it's going to go. Like, is it better just to carry on putting in the shifts Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday? Or is it going to benefit us by having this this two-week break and having that rest and then maybe raring to go against Millwall? You, you kind of don't know which one is better. I could see it being a positive for us, to, to be fair. I mean, like I said, it's gonna, the players going to rest up. I think we need it. I think we've got about five, six players that injured at the moment. So, look, if we can get half of them back, then, well, you obviously can't get, but, you know, yeah. certain players back. Obviously, we, it's going to be a bit longer, but, no, nah, it's only a good thing, I think. Increases competition, back for places. People want to get back in the team that's doing well. And uh, they all want to be part of this because mm-hmm. they could be making history. And before we get into the win on, on Saturday, we've, we've just got to talk about the current league table and us sitting third and look we're all dreaming aren't we because if you would have said to us at the start of this season or any stage of this season you're going to be third mm-hmm. with eight games to go it, it is just ridiculous hearing that isn't it it's great no is, is it ridiculous it's great we we're, we're there on merit aren't we we're not there because everybody else is crap we're there on merit we've done really really well and that's that's the thing a lot of teams have underestimated this this season you know the whole team's like looting thing fans in particular, I wouldn't say management, but fans in particular would go, oh, we're going to beat those. And, you know, they've come in for a shock. So yeah, I'm loving it because, you know, enjoy it. Enjoy it while you can. It's a dream, but I can't wait for it to get better. But it's just ridiculous in the sense of you look at the teams at the top of the table and we've said it before that Nathan Jones, the, the budgets, yeah. what we pay for players, it's just unreal to think an unreal effort from everyone at the club to get to this situation where we are in a position like you say we deserve to be there on merit we're, we're playing so well this season we're picking up results uh, we've got the third most goals in the league we've now got the third yep. most wins in the league everything is looking positive positive. and we're kicking ourselves that we still haven't got certain points that we should yeah, yeah. Just like should have, yeah, yeah absolutely well, that, yeah, yeah. you know you just think about those games that we let go <clears throat> Which would have, you know, would have been the auto positions by now. Yes, yeah, it's it. crazy, and and what a difference a week makes. You know, we we know we get turned over by QPR, and then a week later we're way above them again. You know, it's yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. It's great, and and we worked hard. The comment that's kind of winding me up at the moment is other fans of other clubs are seeing Luton in third, and their first thing they go to is, oh, well, the championship's terrible yeah, this yeah, season. Oh, it's a really bad championship. That's, and you're just like. We give ourselves credit, right? And we deserve credit, but it feels like other fans from other clubs don't give us enough credit and the credit we deserve for being where well, we are. They just look at us and go, oh, Luton are a tiny club. You know, they've got a small budget. They can't do anything. And then realistically, they hey, can, can do something. If you've, only been, if you've only been watching football since the Premier League started, which a lot of them would be from their armchairs, um, 
they would have no idea of our history. They would have no idea of how... And a lot of young fans, to be fair, yeah, wouldn't, would, wouldn't would have so, grown up with Luton in the so, conference. Which so is they see Luton Town as a non-league team, but they're not. They're they not do that. their research then, shouldn't they? Right. But, you know, tables don't lie, do they? They just don't lie. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm with you on that one. And the other one, the shot at the football ground, you know, the Oak Road entrance, does my head in. Well, I hope they don't lie anyway. This Imagine could be a Premier junk. League. <laughs> this, yeah, but this could be a... Pre- you know, this not, for years, that was the home end. For years. Mm. So the away fans were treated to going through the other end of the, the stadium. So, you know. To be honest, they could quite easily just board up that staircase in the away end and no one would ever know it was a garden. But I think it's more fun leaving it open to... To let people course. people see the gardens, but it's historical. Lovely. It's historical. A couple more years there, and then we're we're out. And when the day we leave that stadium, we'll all be we'll all be crying. But it is that situation of we're there. We deserve to be in third place at the moment. And if you ask any other fan, predict your top six. I bet none of them put us in it. Everyone always looks and goes, "Oh well, Luton will drop off, and Luton will drop points." Yeah, yeah. And, yes. and, and who's going to put them in? Even now, they're not putting us in them. No, even now, with eight games to go. I was just even about to say now. that, Dave. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people who are still you know, obviously tweeting a lot of crap going, oh, yeah, you know, Luke won't stay there. They'll probably end up like 10th or whatever. But it might do, yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think anyone who has, who has half a clue about football, they wouldn't be surprised either about us finishing up there. Because you look at us on paper, which a lot of people do. I said this to you on Saturday, didn't I? Mm-hmm. You look on paper, we've got the most favourable running mm-hmm. compared to everyone else in the top six. And also, you know, you know, disregard us at your peril, really. Yeah. And, you know, we're not we're not going to lose eight games, are we? It's in our own hands, and that's the main thing. It's not like yeah. we rely on other people to lose. It's in our own hands. What do Luton have to do to, like, you know, get people to, like, yeah. kick their mouths shut and stop saying all this Probably crap? Probably just get a new stadium, because yeah. I think that's yeah, what it comes it, down it? to, isn't it? At the end of the day, or it comes... get a bigger budget. Oh, here we go. No, oh, long, right. long, long may they continue to underestimate yeah, us. Long good. may that happen. You know what? And if we were lucky enough to go up, they'll be underestimating us in the next division as well. And, and good luck to them all. And uh, let's see how it goes. Well, let's talk about Luton and the Premier a little bit later. And uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves, but let's dream. No, let's, let's get ahead <laughs> of ourselves. He started it. <laughs> let's do three word reviews of hole one, Luton three. Neville says up to third. Helen, dare to dream. Neil says maybe, just maybe. Mike, really good football. Ted says Adebayo, Cornick and Brie. Or oh, Brie, not, not the end. Louis says who needs centre-backs. James, what a team. Uh, Phil says book Wembley tickets. And Max, Bree's free kick. Mate, I like that one there, what Mike said, really good football. And do you know what, I'd say for about 60% of this season, we have seen really good football from us. I mean, it's a bit, been a bit rude one sometimes, when it's needed to be. But look, the football, I think, it's it's confident football, it's high press, it's energy, do you know what I mean? We're seeing the team now, a group of people, a group of players, sorry, that are, they want to win back everything. I mean, second balls, they're on it. How many times in the past have we sat and gone, Jesus Christ, like, why is no one like, running for that or there's no determination to get the ball? And I think you see it from every single player. It's not just like your Campbells or your Clarks now. It, you're seeing it from everyone. Do you know what impressed me about Saturday's win? And this is how I described it to you because you, you didn't get to see it on the weekend. But um, it, it feels like in some games in recent weeks, we've had to really work hard and grind out a win. But it did feel like on Saturday we were... Uh, close to our best again and it was kind of an easy stroll and yeah. a walk in the park and you know I'm not saying we didn't work hard but it wasn't like we had to nick a goal and get a 1-0 win it was we've come here we've controlled the game we could have scored yeah, more yeah. I think it's the way we controlled the midfield as well I mean that midfield was absolutely phenomenal win on Saturday I mean like I keep saying like press and whatever else it was just the constant pressure in midfield it was just overpowering and it was oh, it's ridiculous but then you go and, well, I do, I know I do it for fun anyway, but I, I go and look at what the opposition thought of us and every single fan that's, that's commented is basically saying, oh, Luton are not that good, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, you know we should have beaten them and all this crap. And then, you know, they they misjudge us again. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's nice. It's For me, it's what how Luton Town are. That's This is what Luton Town do, that they play. And when they play, they play fast, attractive football. And if they have to dig in, they dig in. Yeah, we're seeing more variety yeah. this season as well, aren't we? But the press, the press at the weekend, because uh, I've watched the highlights and uh, the match back, and the press was amazing. Mm. They were working really hard. Louis says, who needs centre-backs? And at the yeah, moment, for the second that. game in a row, we're, or game and a half in a row, that we're lining up with a back five of full-backs. And let's be honest, it's, it's working perfectly, isn't it? And we had one change in from Wednesday in Preston. 
on your dinner coming in for his only third 90 minutes of the season. He came in for Burke, who pulled up against Preston. So no recognised centre backs were in the lineup. But even on Saturday, Batara, we were sitting there and we were, we were chatting about the the makeshift back five, if you like to call it that. And we're quite happy with like Dan Potts there at centre off. Well, I was just about to say about Dan Potts. I mean, I used to say it years ago, didn't I? I said on here right at the start when we used to first do this and whatever else, I used to say um, Dan Potts for me is a better centre half than he's a left back. And I think we see more from him at centre half position. Maybe in a free, it might benefit him. But I think the other day when we looked at obviously like, you know, team, or sorry, a back five or a back three or whatever you want to call, call it, of a f- uh, full backs, I actually look at Dan Potts and go, no, nah, he's a centre half. Because I don't think, well, not maybe not, a bit harsh to say, maybe not. People don't think he's comfortable in a uh, left back position, but I think in a three, he's a lot more competent than he is at left back. That's basically it, yeah. And with Bell, obviously the first choice left back, I do like the fact that we've got then that option of, of putting Potts there next to Bell. And yeah. you look at Bell going forward, and maybe he's a little bit quicker, maybe his final ball is a little bit better, but Potts has been known in his time at the club for his his jumping and his heading mm-hmm. and how good he is with that. And having a left-footed player in, in that centre-half spot as well to slot in when Naismith and Bradley are out, is, I, th- I think it's quite an important thing. Yeah, of course. Refreshing that we can we can call on a squad in that way. Yeah. You know, in the past, we wouldn't have had a squad big enough to cope with this. And that's probably why, you know, we've recruited well and that's probably why we're doing well. And because is, everyone fills yeah. in for everyone else. It's fantastic. Dan Potts as well. I mean, he's proved a lot of people wrong, hasn't he? Yeah. Probably, well... Me as well. I mean, well I'm going to say including you, Bataro, yeah, yeah, to I be mean, honest. Because realistically, I looked at it in League Two and I, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm his biggest fan. I'm still not his biggest fan, but obviously he does a good job when he plays, honestly, in, in the back three. But I think when we used to see him at left back, especially in League Two as well, or League One, I still didn't think he was that great then. Maybe a bit harsh, but I'll be honest, that's what I used to say. But I'm happy for him to step in and to do a job. I, want to, I wouldn't want to see him there the whole season. But I'm happy for him to be cover for them three at the back. Perfect. Uh, let's talk about the goals then. We went 1-0 up just after a chance we had from Cornick on the left-hand side. He, he burst through, uh, his shot was saved, and then the goal came from like, a similar attack from that left-hand side. So maybe that was in the, in the, in the notes in the analyst department before the game was attacked that left-hand side because we were getting a lot of joy down that side. And Adebayo cuts in. Uh, from the angle Luton have tweeted, it does look like it potentially could be going wide if it doesn't take oh, really? that nick off the keeper. But Adebayo slots it away and it's, and it's 1-0. And at that stage, what, 11 minutes gone? We were looking comfortable, weren't it's we? that early, bloody hell. But yeah, no, look, we were comfortable the whole game, I thought. I mean, Dave, you've seen it back, haven't you? The yeah, the goal, the goal actually. I, I think Adebayo has got so much more to offer. I think he can be so much quicker and so much better than he is right now. But when he's on, and, and, and that's not a criticism of me, I think he's got so much more to, to show us mm-hmm. going forward, and especially if he stays with us. Um, and it may be even a little bit careless with his shot, but when I looked at it, I thought he, he put it away really nicely. So, you know, yeah, I thought he was right finish. place, right time, right finish. He was really strong up front. It was really a great, strong. great performance from Adebayo at the weekend, wasn't it? And it was one that we look at and we go, yeah, that's, that's Adebayo at his best, and that powerful running and the skill and the touch and... Everything just about everything him. about yeah. him he's got he's got everything maybe the only thing he can work on is staying on side a little bit mm-hmm. more but apart from that everything else mate his awareness is though, unreal it's, honestly how old is this guy 22 23 24 24 whatever he's still a young kid like, I mean he's been doing it since what well last the, the, season or two and he's honestly he's just the worry the him. worrying thing is though um, for us as a team he's getting noticed more now so they'll have one or two effects somebody will come in and take him away or they'll, they'll work out how to deal with him better. So, you know, he has been sensational this season. Sensational. And, and, the, and the finish, really, let's give him some credit. He got there, he, he put the strike on target, he was a goal. Yeah. Well, you can ask some more from your striker, really, can you? Hull didn't really have that many chances on goal. It says down here in the stats that he had 15 shots and four on target, which is a lot more than we had. Um, but... Realistically, I don't remember them troubling us that much. I think in the first half, they put a, put a few balls across the face of goal, which led to nothing. And uh, second half, they had that there. header from that free kick, which I think if Shea's come out and he's mm-hmm. he's not going anywhere near it, if it's on target, it does go in. But apart from that... And maybe Tommy's with a snapshot over the bar as well. Half a chance, yeah, yeah, not a proper chance. Nothing that four, I can remember, like clear cut. Four shots on target. I find that hard to believe. Um, 
but we did make it 2-0 and I love this goal and this is everything that we're about this season and it is that high press from Elijah and he's forced the, the defender into mistake and he's, he's shown great strength as well to get that tackle in there because mm-hmm. that is a brilliant tackle. We thought Cornick nearly missed it because he took that touch but oh, he, yeah. he, he didn't miss it and he tucked it away for 2-0 and happy but days. How intelligent was that for Adebayo to look up and make the pass? I thought he was going to chip it. it on, yeah. I thought he, my first, my first thought when he, when he tackled him was he's going to chip yeah. the keeper here or he's going to try and take it around him. I didn't even see Cornick there yeah, as an option to pass. But same as that. But he would have been capable of doing taking it around the keeper. But to look up, see Cornick pass the ball. Cornick, when you, when you look back at it, you know, he, he could have lost that yeah. for, for the the little touch he took. Well, we said on Saturday, like if you're that whole defender, you've got to you've make got a bit yeah, more of an of effort to get your foot in there, I surely. Still, I still feel the defender could have got it. Well, does maybe is the defender thinking, thinking, thinking if I miss timeless is a red card, yeah, because absolutely. it's a clear scoring opportunity? But yeah. I don't know. You look back at that replay and you think if he just puts his leg out a bit more, yeah, he probably, well, gets, he he probably gets the ball because they are very close together. And it's not like it was almost like Cornet got it kind of stuck under his feet a little bit, wasn't it? Yeah, in, in a way. But no, I mean, like I say, we'll take it. But it wasn't the uh, it was well the build up was quite quite nice, but it was more the. Uh, the finish, the touch and the finish, you thought, just bury it first time, mate. What are you doing? If he'd missed that, well, we know. Everyone would be fuming, wouldn't we? But he did. That's the main thing. Is that yeah. double figures for him now? Yeah, it's telling, isn't it? It's crazy. I think producer goals, Jacob yeah. put the other day on, on social media that it's a 25-goal strike partnership this season. Thing. Oh, really? And yeah. that's, that's, what, that's what gets you in the position we're in, you know? If you're not getting a regular scorer up front, no think, matter how well you play, you're not going said, up um, anywhere. Is it Ali's on uh, 20, is it 14 now? In the yeah. league, 14 goals in the league already. Amazing. Mental. Producer Jake has put down a nice little note here, which I think we're both real, and is that, that Lewis Potter was their only real threat at yeah. the weekend and was only only their only decent, decent player. He is a player that's obviously young and he's having interest from the Premier League, but I think we dealt with him really well on the weekend. Yeah, I mean, a few times he caused a couple of problems, didn't he? With his, obviously, he's quite, he's quite an intelligent player, isn't he, as well. So, a couple of touches, gets around players, then he? Got a bit of flair about him, but... No, like you say, I think Hull, with all due respect to Hull City, they weren't the best and they were, I thought they were quite poor, like as in positional sense and all that sort of stuff. I thought that they didn't really know how to handle us, if that makes sense. Yeah. It was almost like they, when they were so high up the pitch, they left so many gaps in the midfield and not like, between the full backs or however they played. I think they played a sort of similar formation to us, didn't they? 3-5-2. And the amount of gaps that out wide, on the, especially on the left hand side, like you said, on the first half, it was the same in the second half as well. Yeah. How many times did we get in down that left hand side in the second half? But ah, look, it obviously you've got to give us credit as well. But Hull did not help themselves now. I just think we we are playing, and it's a silly thing to say, but we're playing as a team right now. We're all playing for each other, and sometimes you meet opposition that maybe are not doing the same. I mean, Hull, Hull have not done well this season, have they, really? No, but then they were promoted from last season, so I think for them to be where they no, are... They, but they, but their expectations... Done that bad. But their, expect, their fans' expectations... What well, are their fans' expectations? I think though? their fans' expectations are ex-Premier League, we should be pushing up here now. You know, that's what I think. Is it? Oh. But they're not. To be honest, I actually don't think they've done that bad, to be honest, Dave. Well, they're, you know... I mean, they're, how many points are they on? 35, something like that, 36? Well, they, they're, not going, they're not going anywhere, are they staying well, up? No, of course they're not. But, I mean, I've watched them a few times this season. They look all right. I mean, they're quite an entertaining team to watch, usually. But then saying that, manager's gone now, and he? have got some other bloke in charge, and which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Getting rid of, uh, was it Grant McCann? Mental, but... Never mind, eh? But, you know, fair play, because he's got the Peter around. They got the points against QPR, didn't they, yesterday? So... Yeah, that was great. It's all good. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the goal that made it 3-0. This was brilliant play from Jordan Clark to win the free kick in the first place. Um, lucky he, uh, well, he, he blew for the free kick and as we as we scored, because I think it was like a four-on-one at one yeah. stage. Uh, but Breeze stepped up and he's whipped a beautiful free kick into the top corner via the underside of the crossbar. And at that stage, you're just thinking like, what, what performance has just caps off such a beautiful day of football. And it was an unreal goal, weren't it? And look, James Bree, he had stick from the fans at the start of the season. He's really, I think he's really improved since the start of the season. He's kind of like finding a, a bit of rhythm in the game and he deserved that goal for all of his efforts this oh, season. Mate, he's been, well, I think I had a conversation with him on Saturday about player of the season. So who do you think is going to get it? And I said, well, it'd probably be Elijah. Yeah. Or But for me, it's been James Brew because the consistency levels. Absolutely ridiculous, mate, that is. Like, honestly, that guy 
he does not get enough credit. And maybe, well, maybe he does now, but I think, well, I know I've been saying it for the last couple of years. A big we, st- we knew he was a very good player. Big strike. Who knew he could do that? Who knew he could take the free kick like that? Well, yeah, I mean... An amazing strike up and over that wall. Top corner. I mean, the way he whips the, bar, the ball in from like crazy. getting assists and that. You obviously, we knew he had something like that. But, yeah, where did that come from, eh? It's nice to see those every now and then go in. It was a tremendous goal, really, really well taken. And, and and I think they said at the weekend on on the highlights, you know, on Quest and everywhere else, I mean, the technique to get it up and over that wall, mm-hmm. that close to the goal, was amazing. Well, Chris Boyd liked it, didn't he? He did like it yeah, on Sky Sports, excited, he did, he? yeah. Here's a good question then for you, just the one you said on, on James Brian. I'll put this to you listening as now as well. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment below, or if you're listening, go and jump on Twitter and tweet as O in the town. Who is your player of the season so far? Because we are getting to that stage now. We've got eight games left. At the moment, you look at the whole squad. Is there anyone that you look at that stands out and you go, that player has been phenomenal this season? But we know, obviously, Addy's completely... There's too many. There's too many to well, choose so. from, isn't there? There's too many, for me personally, it's, it's James Bree. So you say James Bree. I yeah. think Alan Campbell's coming to his own. Um, you can't ignore Addy Bayo. Yeah. You just can't. I mean, even Reese Burke as well. You can't. Since so he's been there in the team as well. I wouldn't want to be picking that. I wouldn't want yeah. to be picking that. Amari Bell's had a good season, to be fair to him. I think I still think James Bree's been 10 times better than him. Though. Um, what about Shea? Yeah, I just guess with Shea, he has had stages where he's, he didn't play the first half of the season. Obviously, he was Snooker. Na- Naismith as well. Yeah. yeah so I, I think there's so many options, played. isn't there? It's Who has? I guess the way you look at it is, if you took that player out of the team, who would we like miss the most? I don't know. For me, it's got to be between. I think maybe Adebayo, Campbell. Yeah, I think at the moment Campbell Bree, would be. Yeah, or Naismith maybe. Maybe you, you say one of them four. Am I right? Do you reckon us? We're right. Even Sunny, mate. You forget about him as well. He makes people click together. So well, let's put that to you, listening right now. Who do you think has been Luton Town's player of the season so far? If you had to give out the award tomorrow, who would you be giving it to? Let us know over in the town on Twitter. Who do you think then? You say. Uh, one. I'll, you know, I have to give it to Adebayo. Addy, I'll yeah. Do you do you what are you asking me now? Yeah, go on, quick fire. It, go uh, on. Well, I'll, I'll, one? I'd have to give it to the one person I think has impressed me most. Didn't impress me to start with, and I, I think Alan Campbell's absolutely a machine. So I'd give it to yeah. him. Mine would be close with Alan Campbell because I've yeah, been very, yeah, very impressed with him as well. But then I've been impressed with James Abrey as well. So it's a tough one. But yeah, we'll put that to you. Let us know below in the comments or on socials. Oh, in the town. Um, Hull did score a goal. It was Eves. Uh, he, he tapped it in. Was it a tap in? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah ball across the goal. Yeah. Tapped in. Shame that. The 3-1. The players' reaction says it all, don't it? They were gutted about conceding that goal. But at the end of the day, I think Nathan Jones would agree. The three points are the most yeah, important things it. in that situation. I was pretty upset though when I was well. Oh, you were fuming. I hate, yeah, but. I hate that. Was it 90... First minute or whatever. Oh, fucking hell. 16 clean sheets, still the division's best, according to producer Jacob here. And a nice little stat from Luton Analytics. The joint first. Joint first on high turnovers that lead to a goal. It's a very American football saying, isn't it? High, high turnovers? What high yeah, well, a bit, a bit, a bit, you know, a bit like a bit like the Addy Bayo thing. Yeah, just winning possession back and convert. Uh, I don't really understand the whole turnover thing. Turnover. Just means win the ball from a high. So position, I'm just thinking mate. of Apple turnover now. I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to bring that up. But it puts us up to third in the table. I know we spoke about this at the start of the podcast, but the, I was driving to work on yesterday, on yesterday, which is Sunday. And I was thinking the whole way, just in my head, every single playoff scenario that potentially could happen. And I was just getting quite excited about it. And it is an exciting time, isn't it? Because you do look at the teams in the playoffs. And you look at like Blackburn and Huddersfield and it was Sheffield United, yeah, QPR, yeah. Borough, Forest. Look, there's, a, there's a lot more to play out before the end of the season. Definitely, um, we're, in, we're in with a shout. It's in our own hands. But, you know, it's going to be tough to stay there. It's going to be tough to do it. And it's going to be tough to, to get through the, the playoff semis, let alone the playoff final, or even achieve it. So, you know, we can dream for a bit longer and we must make sure that we don't become complacent with it. I and mean, if we if we play like we've been playing, then, you know, we win three, four games, we're done, aren't we? Five games more, I think we, we're, we're definitely going to go up to the, to the playoffs, aren't we? All I want is a nice playoff two-leg in mm. May in the sunshine. Oh, can you imagine? 
Oh, no, don't see, you see, you can. can imagine it. But the thing don't. is, as well, if it's Huddersfield, QPR, Sheffield, you, you look at all these teams. Don't write off. You're going to have a huge away allocation yeah. as well. Like, right. So they don't write Forest either because I think they're going. Oh, I think Forest. I think they're, a, yeah, they're much better than well. What's in there? Us, yeah, apart from us clearly, but wow. Yeah. Oh, it's mad. Let's see where we are mad. when we when we uh, beat Millwall. Well, the player we wanted to focus on today was Jordan Clark because this guy's come back from injury recently and I think he's been amazing in the middle of the pitch. And he's a player that when we signed him, he wasn't a big name. He didn't come from a another huge club. It was a free transfer. There was maybe like a little bit of, we don't know what to expect from him, but he has really been unreal for us since we signed. And he's so good on the ball, the way he twists and turns. It's almost mm. like David Silverest, the way he controls that ball. Mate, and that centre of gravity is And turns, it's yeah. amazing. What a player he's been for us. Mate, like, we all know, don't we? He's, he's one of the players as well. I mean, ho- well, we were hoping, was hoping, sorry, he'd be a lot fitter than what he was this season. I think he's missed quite a few games, didn't he? Yeah, but that wasn't his fault, was it? He, he was taken out. Well, yeah. He was I'm taken saying, out was, by a road goalkeeper, in my opinion. Oh, is that is anyone's fault, Dave? No, it was definitely the goalkeeper's fault that day. <laughs> but, um, but no, I mean, well, his name's he's Trigger. a great player. Trigger. Do you know what? Together, you, 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 when, when you sign someone, you can normally gauge, you know, whether we've got a little, you know, gem coming in when, when you see how the oppositions or the people he's left are tri- talking about him. You know, if they, if they thought he was rubbish, you, mm-hmm. you'd soon, you soon get that. They didn't want him to go, did they? He, he made the right decision coming to us. He's definitely developed as a player, is, in my view. In, in his delight to see on the pitch. He's a player, though, I look at, and look, we are dreaming, but if we were to make the Premier League, he's yeah. one I feel potentially could step have up, an yeah. opportunity to step up and show that actually he can he can compete not? in the Premier League. Well, mate, I mean, you look at the amount of times, he, like you say, he turns with the ball and twists around people and does whatever. He sometimes takes two or three players out of the game at once, yeah. which is ridiculous. But like you say, his work rate is phenomenal as well. Like it's, honestly, his vision, his vision, everything about him is just brilliant. I mean, for an attacking midfielder, he likes to come back and defend as well, which is what we like to see really, isn't it? football fans. We love yeah. that sort of stuff. And he compliments the players playing with him, around him yeah. as well in, in midfield too. But you're right about his vision. There's a few times where he's looked up and, and pinged the ball that was like exquisite. Yeah, he's a great player. And whenever he's on the ball, I always just do feel like he's got that magic. He's got Something's going to happen. Yeah, yeah because he it. can carry the ball really well and he's that's that close control and the agility is just... Uh, he's brilliant. He's brilliant basically player. like a lower league Messi, really, for us. Yeah, but literally. Like, yeah. uh, so we asked you guys, since his return from injury, how have you rated his performances? And producer Jacob says, is he a must-start going forward? So that's what we asked you on Twitter. And Darren says... I think that the trio of Clark, Berry and Campbell is outstanding. Clark just brings the extra bit of quality that we didn't necessarily miss when he was out, uh, but will certainly need for the run-in. Uh, Stephen says, Jordan is a machine. He is so careful with the ball. His energy and fitness levels are insane. Would like a goal or two from him, but what a gem. And yeah, well, careful you know. with the ball as well. I like that. That's probably what I was trying to think of earlier. But yeah, careful with the ball. He's, he's like very, so calm very, on it, yeah. isn't it? He, and it, he gives off that vibe that when he's on the ball, it's... You don't have to panic. It's not like mm-hmm. you've got a big clumsy. I don't want to compare two footballers in different leagues and have different positions, but whenever like Harry Maguire's on the ball for Man United, you always look at and you think, oh, what's he going to do? Yeah, he's yeah, like you clunky with it. But it's like Jordan Clark is so like smooth. Yeah, that's smooth. Yeah. I love the way you said that. So, like, if you compare the two on the ball, and it's just like you just feel so much more calm. Well, I'm always happy to see him on the ball. When every time he's got the ball, we're like, oh, yeah, okay, he's going to pick someone out here. Or occasionally he doesn't, but we're allowing that sometimes, aren't we? Even when he, like, sh- in our opinion, shouldn't be so calm on the ball. I think that there was that game a couple of weeks ago when on he did that turn. Line, and he, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, my heart was in my mouth. But he knew what he was doing. And I sat there like, please just boot it upfield. But he the absence, did some amazing is, quote turn, didn't he? Is the absence, wasn't it? Yeah. That was it, yeah. yeah. It was. Is the absence of goals a problem, though? I don't think so. I think he's setting them up. He's, he's doing well. But if he if he's going to score one this season, play a final winner, please. Dan says, we play better football with him in the team. Are able to vary our approach more by playing through the midfield as well as going direct to Adebayo. He has to start, especially on current form. But you can't argue with that, really, can you? He's just a unit, well, not a unit, a machine. He is, like Stephen says, Jordan is a machine. He is. And he a bit like Darren says, stop, that, that midfield trio at the moment of Clark, Berry and Campbell is something that 
does have a lot of energy and it is providing yeah. results and mate I like the midfield was it last week against um, who did you play Preston Preston yeah the midfield three I think it was uh, Barry Clark Campbell oh small on the smaller side that's what Jesus. Hey, have you not been who? listening <laughs> what's that <laughs> that's what Darren said <laughs> have you not been listening <laughs> That trio. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were great, though. And he's, That was he's, the first one, I don't and, and, and do you know what? <laughs> Patari, you know, you, you're not wrong, though, are you? And Darren's not wrong, either. James says he runs more than anyone. Need him in the team. His attacking mentality is crucial, as well. Right, yeah. He's someone who picks the ball up and wants to go forward with it. Anthony says, an outstanding footballer just gets better and better. Always gives 110% and is a huge player for us. Incredible that we got him on a free two. Good business. Yeah. Which makes you think, as well, he, he's probably worth a little bit now. Jordan Clark. Well, the seasons he's had. Season, he's, so, yeah. I just don't you just love the re- recruitment for us this season? It's been immense, and the team have been immense recruiting, and, and they've found a gem, haven't they, with him when and, they recruited him? And we'll keep him. finding more as well. That's the exciting thing about it. Chris says he and Berry knit the play together so nicely and stretched defences off the ball, uh, which gives the forwards more space. Wasn't sure the Campbell, Clark, and Berry midfield would be robust enough, but totally being proven wrong. They look so good. Must start. It's impressive to see Luke Berry just pop up in the team and just score. He seems to always be in that right place to score, doesn't he? And I, I know I he, he did that season when he scored, what, 15 odd goals for Cambridge. He yeah. clearly gets into them positions perfectly. Well, I mean, what we said the other day about the whole thing of him going to Barnsley for, I think, was it a million pounds he went for? Yeah. It's that ridiculous, wasn't it? And then after he has dropped down again, came back to Cambridge, I think, and then went to us. I don't know how much we signed him for, maybe 400k or whatever. But I think back then, I remember being so excited about, obviously, Berry. I said, I'm going a bit off topic here a little bit, but he's also another player that I absolutely love a Luton. It's Barry. And when he comes back into the team as well, I also feel very confident with Clark yeah. and Barry both in the team. Class. Just always think with Barry, you're going to get a goal. Mm-hmm. You put that ball in, he's he's there. Somehow he's just always hanging around just to, to score. But then again, he yeah. works hard and gets about. We've got, we've got something good going on here, mate. Luke says, absolutely outstanding on and off the ball. He makes them little runs that split the midfield and the defence and makes amazing runs and passes. Couldn't ask for more. We definitely missed him and Barry when they're out injured. Yeah. And Chappard says, always gives 100%, whichever, whichever position he's asked to play in. Our transfer business is genius, but to see this lad weaving through championship midfielders and defenders is a joy to watch. His confidence is, is sky high, and in short, I think I'm in love with him. <laughs> <laughs> huh. That's a nice one to finish on, isn't it? I, you, know, how can you, dis- you can't disagree with any of that. He's just been a quality player for us, and you know, long may he stay, and long may he continue to be really, really good. That's it. I've got a question for you both. Yes. Okay. And a question for everyone as well, if they'd like to answer it. Where do you prefer him to play, number 10 or out wide? Because I know mm. he plays more in midfield nowadays. I think he can play either, you know, and I, but I do like him in that 10. Yeah. I do like him in the 10. I see him as a, I see him initially as a ten, but do you know what? And there's the thing with our midfield; they can switch over. Do you remember last season we played him? Was it last season? The season before? That no, was last season, wasn't it? We played him quite a lot at sort of like wing back, didn't we? And I thought honestly that was that was something else. Watching a winger or an attacking midfielder go to a wing back position and do what he did. I tell you what, though, I wouldn't. Mo- I've been so impressed with Fred on your dinner in the last couple of games he's played, and his willingness to mm-hmm. take on a defender and his step overs and his little oh, yeah. burst little of acceleration. I wouldn't, if we, I'm not saying change anything because everything's perfect right now, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't be a, a, against seeing a 4-3-3 with Clark right on your Dinma left, uh, Adebayo Central. That'd be pretty nice. But yeah, well, anyway. it would be, but the only thing is we never play a three, do we, anymore? No, exactly, that's what I'm saying. You don't yeah. have to change anything, but I think that'd work pretty well. Uh, should we get into some more questions then? We've, we've left a bit of time for Insta questions today because some of them are really nice. So let's do it. Yeah. Tom says, is second place unrealistic? No. Really? It's not unrealistic. Okay. It's probably unlikely. Mathematic, I say it's mathematically unlikely possible. Unrealistic. Mathematical pro- pro- possible. Um, can you see Bournemouth um, giving the point swing to, uh, to us in that, do you know in what that way, right? shape or form? Possibly not, no. Because they spent crap loads of money in the transfer window. They're not going to let it go. I still don't think... They've still got really games in hand. People were saying as well, Bournemouth, Bournemouth have got the toughest running out of like the top top six, top eight at the moment. But I think if they were going to lose any fixture, it would, have been, paper, though, it it? would have been Saturday away at Huddersfield. Yeah, you know, if, it's a tough you know, game. Here's the thing, though. If they, if they are playing the top six, then they're going to do us lots of favours too. So... Um, is it unrealistic? You can keep dreaming about it while it's mathematically possible. Yeah, of but course. I think we've got to be a little bit more... It's, it's unlikely. Down to earth. Down to earth. 
But, you know, it'd be great if it happened, wouldn't it? But you never know. We win our next two, they lose the next two, and it's back on. See, you've done it again, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, you know what I mean? Oh, dear me. Um, flustered over here. Jack says, if we get up to the Premier League, can Kenilworth Road be used in the Prem? Of course yes. it can be used. They're going to have to tart it up a bit, of course. Bit of paint, bit of uh, other stuff they've got to put up. And obviously, uh, that stupid thing that we don't like has to be input. Um, but they'll be, you know, if anybody's naive enough to think that we're not preparing ourselves to to go up and we're not making sure that we know what we have to do in the summer to the stadium to make sure we can go up, then, um, you know, they're a bit deluded, aren't they? So all these comments you see on Twitter about the ground being, you know, a crap hole. I have seen a few comments on Twitter from other fans going, oh, they won't be able to play at Kenilworth Road, they'll of have to ground share. And it's just like, I listened so. to Gary Sweet was on... Um, the Athletic podcast a couple of weeks ago before the Chelsea game and he did was asked the question can Kenilworth Road go into the Premier League and he basically said I don't see how it's any different to Bournemouth's Dean Court being well, in the yeah. Premier League and, you know there's it's not like this is the first 10k capacity stadium going into the Premier League potentially um, I think things would have to change we know that but well it's from possible. working at Brentford it is the one of the main things I think is the TV being able to house yeah. what 10 11 cameras every single game it's the VAR. It's also the floodlights. I think we'd need completely new floodlights if we were to go up to the Premier League. But press rooms as well, wouldn't it? Press room yeah. places for flash interviews. There's there's a few yeah. things, and it's mainly TV. And I think it's something like the broadcasters need to be able to get their their broadcast trucks in uh, as close to the stadium as possible. Obviously, we ain't got room for that. Uh, but hey, but listen, if if, if, if the stuff I'm sure they're thinking about, isn't it? Let's be if honest. promoting to that division gives the club 90 million pounds i'm sure they won't 104 i think 104 million pounds and you know they're not going to worry about spending a couple of million doing the ground up are they that's no i know and even if it's going to be that much you know but they they know they need to spend on it i think we had to spend about a million didn't we to when we come up yeah Yeah, for like the boardings and the goal line and whatever else yeah so you know what of course it'll be in the course it'll be good enough and you know and then that will shock a few people and maybe give us an advantage. You know, we're dreaming oh, I'd again. Lo- I'd love to see Kenneth Ryan. M- imagine that. We're in the Premier League the last season that we're in there. Oh, be armor, wouldn't it? Ryan so, says... I know, sorry, I know next season isn't the last season. What I'm saying is just imagine we go up and we stay there. No, it's highly unlikely again. But <laughs> wake we're dreaming, up. We're wake up. Wow. Wake up. Ryan says, which team in the championship this season has underperformed? Oh, which team has underperformed? Um, There's probably quite a few you look at in there, isn't there, that well, you'd, you'd have thought you'd have thought um, the likes of Barnsley who were playoffs last year. You'd think they would have done better. You'd think they might have just you know gone on from that, but that's done. Well, Swansea reached the playoff final yeah. last year, and, and I think Swansea. after that they mm. were probably going. I know they lost a few of their key players in the summer, but uh, well, Stoke City and other Stoke, as well. Stoke, yeah. Yeah. very good to see as well. I like that. So I think there's a there is a couple. Even that's someone that's like Birmingham City, you know, the start of the season when they beat us five 0 they would yeah. have been. Pretty I'm, confident. I'm not gonna lie, Bournemouth as well. Yeah, I thought they might be in. Well, you West Brom as well. Another one. Oh, yeah. West Brom. Yeah, West Brom massively. But obviously, the Bournemouth one, people might go, oh, actually, no, they're still second. But realistically, they haven't even. I mean, the total charge was off for them, wasn't it? From Christmas onwards, really. If I don't, Fulham run away of it. Fulham run away of it. The amount of money that Bournemouth has spent. As I well, refer you to when we was at Bournemouth, and I said, I don't think Bournemouth will win the league. Yeah. I didn't. I. I, I mean, they've obviously improved loads, but at that day, I thought we was unlucky not to win. So yeah, them as well. I'll give you that one. But realistically, I think West Brom are the team in there. West Brom underperform because I said at the beginning of the season, and I thought they might get. Well, yeah, right. I mean, I d- well. when you say underperform, though, do you find underperform because you know it's expectations of of fans, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Or is it expectations of their club? Well, sometimes because lots of fans would think club. That I mean, the, the amount of money the players they've got. I mean, there'll be many. It. There'll be many fans thinking their clubs have underperformed because of where we are in the division. But then there'd be loads of managers and players of clubs yeah. that would probably look at their season and go, "We've not, we've not performed well this season." Get that? I get that. And the thing is, with West Brom as well, I, I keep banging on about them. Their recruitment in the summer was pretty shit, wasn't it? I mean, <laughs> like I said, I don't, I don't know anything. Like you know I mean? I'm not a scout, I'm not a manager, or whatever else. But if you look at them kind of players and you think oh, you're spending money on those kind of, come on, man, you can get a lot better than that. But I'm not going to disrespect not worth name out. Sure, yeah, it? So, sorry. So it's just not a word from this year. No. Unless they somehow sneak into the playoffs last minute and beat us in the final or something. Yeah, no chance. <laughs> um, last one then to end today. Alex says, what team would you be most confident in playing in the playoffs? 
assuming we were to get there. Weirdly enough, probably Huddersfield. Yeah, do you reckon? Oh, really? Do you know what? I feel like I'd feel more confident playing Blackburn. I think if you gave us Blackburn at home in that... No, Blackburn away in that first leg. If we finish third or fourth, Blackburn away on like Tuesday night in May with like 3,000 looting there. Nick a 1-0. Stop it. Can you, can you please guarantee that we can turn QPR over at some point? Mm. Please guarantee mm. it. If there was two teams I would want to avoid... In the playoffs, I think Forest would be one of yeah, them. QPR, surely, and probably QPR. I just, I for me, I couldn't stand playing QPR in a playoff final. But you imagine and playing in the final and we break the curse. Yeah, but the thing is, I haven't been that impressed with QPR in the games we played nah. them. That's the thing. The thing is with Forest, obviously they played quite well against Liverpool in the FA Cup at the weekend. But from what I've seen of Forest on TV this season, mm. their front three is electric. They've got Spence at right back, who's yeah. unreal. Um, obviously, John's, Brennan Johnson part of that front three, and he, he's such a big player. And you just think, is he? Could he drag him through a playoff with his talent? You know, it's like they're saying that though. When we went up their place and we drew, was it nil nil, Mister Penn? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. I can't remember the and isn't it? There. But, but isn't but yeah, it? Yeah, we should have beaten them. <laughs> isn't it great though? We're having this conversation now and yeah. being fairly relaxed about it, and you know, a bit on edge because you're really, you're really dreaming. But it's it's a nice place to be, isn't it? Oh, in a few weeks' time, we could be sat here really miserable. Yeah, it'll oh, be the summer. What, a few weeks? Would it? Yeah, when we finish, the, the, you know, season's over. We've done it as far as I'm concerned. Summer's in. Despite how gutting it would be to get to a player final and lose, just to even think about the fact that Luton Town would be in a championship player final, like, we would take 40k to Wembley for that. Like, Yeah, yeah. mate, and it's, it'd be embarrassing for me as well because people would see me cry as well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh mate, I just you know. Well, you come on, you know we'll all be crying if we get to the final. We lost. Uh, well, I'm just crying to my pint and drink it. Then I think I'd up. cry if we win as well. I think there'd be tears no matter what. But we're all dreaming, aren't we? Oh, stop. Yeah, stop it. Yeah, let's, stop it. Is, right, anyway, let's go back down to earth. I know what you're dreaming about. Oh yeah, yeah, cycling. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh no, you're gonna mention that one or? Patara might be cycling with Mark to uh, Peterborough away. Well, he said he will, so let's hope he follows I'll, through I'll with I'll that. Yeah, well, let's hope I don't follow through. Have you checked your emails? <laughs> yeah, I messaged him the other yeah. day. Actually, he's he's him not back. very well at the moment, is he? So, no. uh, get well soon, Mark. Hurry up and get those uh, cycles out. Yeah, so I was supposed to get out on the bikes with him at the weekend. Yeah. Unfortunately, got uh, COVID. Well, hopefully, he's fit enough to and get uh, to yeah. Peterborough in a few weeks' time, a couple of weeks, whenever it is. But, but yeah, no, but I'll be in the support vehicle. Just throw it out there. I have agreed to do it, Mark. And um, I'm currently on a fitness program. I know it doesn't look like it, so I'm still a bit on the chubby <laughs> side, but weirdly enough, I've been running for the last two and a half, three weeks. I've lost a little bit of weight, and I feel a bit fitter, but I'm sure it'll be a lot different when I'm on a bike out to Peterborough. And if you haven't donated yet, just go and visit his Just Giving page, because yeah. it's uh, Donate to Mark. worthy cause. Lovely stuff. Well, thanks so much for listening today. If you haven't watched us before, get us on YouTube, Owen the Town, whenever you get to the office today, or if you're working from home or something, just sit, check us out on YouTube. See Bataro's beautiful, messy... Long hair and yeah, I haven't combed shit beard. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <fucking hell. laughs> Sorry, that was just a really uncalled for attack. Anyway, yeah, uh, you thank you so much terrible, for listening. Mate. Thank you so much for watching, and we shall see you next week. Patch. Actually, we won't see you next week because it's international break. So we'll see you in two yes. weeks. Have a good week off, everyone. <laughs>